Okay, so we are in Jeremiah 23. We're not even going to finish the chapter today. Uh, we'll be in verses 9 to 28. <clears throat> and we're going to see that the Lord reveals the difference between true and false prophets. Now, in today's theological, uh, sorry, technological and digital era, we are bombarded by YouTube prophets telling us of a dream or a fresh word from God. Have you guys seen that? Well, I saw many of them. I know. I would hope that we would have the wisdom to avoid these people like the plague. Oh, I, I just skip over it. <laughs> Why would we believe them? When We're we have the word of God. This when it's been told thousands of years ago what's going to happen. That's right. That's right. From a more recent activity, many of us have heard of what happened with Mark Driscoll at a men's conference in the United States. Mm -hmm. Now, when we do research into this church that was hosting this men's conference, we find that it is a watered-down mega church at best, and a new apostolic reformation, also known as NAR, or NAR supporting at worst. So not the best church. Now, Mark Driscoll proclaimed that the Jezebel spirit was at the conference and Mark was kicked off the stage. We read about Jezebel in 2 Kings, and God says to the church in Thyatira in Revelation chapter 2 that they tolerate that woman Jezebel. But nowhere in Scripture do we see a Jezebel spirit. The church was wrong because of what they allowed to happen there. However, Mark Driscoll was quote-unquote prophesying off-tangent from Scripture. This was a publicity stunt by Mark to push his new book, New Days, Old Demons, published July 1st, 2023. If you find an online preacher, you uh, the, uh, a preacher that you like, whether it's Jack Hibbs, J.D. Farag, Billy Graham, or even John MacArthur, always, always, always confirm what they are saying by Scripture in context, okay? Not just that you saw a verse, but in context. What does it say three or four verses before, and three or four verses after, or the whole chapter, and then inside that book? Make sure that what they're saying is true, and they're not going off tangent. Many people today believe that <clears throat> Christian prophets are some sort of Christian fortune teller. No. 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 The canon is closed, just like what Darcy was talking about. We have the Word of God. There is nothing more to add to Scripture. A modern-day New Testament Christian prophet is one who stands in the presence of the Lord through the study of God's Word to preach it in context and accurately. To bring God's people back to center 
in proper living with Jesus Christ. The main point tonight is Christians need to rightly discern the difference between true and false prophets. So Trish, we'll start with you. Can you read Matthew, uh, not Matthew Jeremiah 23, 9, please? Nine prophets. Concerning the prophets, my heart is broken within me, all my bones shake. I am like a drunken man, like a man overcome by wine, because of the Lord and because of his holy words. Thank For the you. land is full of yeah. adultery. No, yeah, that, that, that's good right is there. We'll, we'll go into 10 later. Okay. Sorry. So <clears throat> who is this concerning? Okay. So-called prophets. The so-called prophets. <clears throat> Why is Jeremiah's heart broken? He's just overcome by all the warnings of the Lord. Because of the Lord and because of his holy words. And he's comparing the holy words of God to what these quote-unquote modern-day prophets are saying. And it doesn't line up. What was Jeremiah like in verse 9? Drunken man. Like a drunken man. Like a drunken man overcome by wine. Can you picture this? You can barely walk. You're staggering because of what you're hearing. And it, it's broken your heart so badly because you have Jebediah over here saying, I've got a fresh word from the Lord, and Donald Trump is going to be president forever. You know what I'm talking about? Everything's going to be great. The economy's going to be good. You're going to be fine. How heartbroken is Jeremiah? Very. Extremely heartbroken. How heartbroken do you have to be to stagger around like a drunken man? His mind was wrecked. Wrecked. His mind was wrecked. His heart was Randy, can you read 23.10, please? For the land is full of adulterers, for because of a curse and the land mourns. The pleasant places of the wilderness are dried up. Their courses of life is evil. Their course of life is evil, and their might is not right. Thank you. What is the land full of? <clears throat> adulterers. adulterers. We'll talk about that later tonight. Why does the land mourn? Because of the curse. Because of the curse. This is the curse of the Mosaic Covenant. You would think that these quote-unquote prophets would know why the land is the way it is, but they don't even know the Word of God. What is dried up? Pastures. All the pastures. So now, you got the animals, your livestock, your livelihood can't eat or drink. You're going to lose everything. You know what? We're seeing that happening too. With these summers getting drier and drier every year. Why? Because so many Yeah. Forest fires have started. Over yeah. Here. Arson season has started in, in Peace River. <laughs> so, yeah. <coughs> yep. Darcy, 23.12, please. 11. 11? 11. 11's even better. <laughs> because both prophets. 
prophet and priest are ungodly. Even in my house I have found their evil. This is the Lord's declaration. What have prophet and priest become? Godless. Ungodly or godless. Mine says wickedness. Wicked. Found more wickedness. Profane. Profane. Mm -hmm. Polluted. Where has God found their evil? In, his in, in, in the temple. Now, New Testament, 1 Corinthians chapter 3, you, plural, are God's temple as the church. Helen, 23.12, please. <clears throat> Therefore, there they will see what city has in his name. They will, they will be driven away and fall down there. For I will bring disaster on them. The year of their, punish, the year of their punishment. This is the Lord's decree. Thank you. What does therefore <laughs> mean? Because of. Because of this. Because the priests are ungodly, the prophets are ungodly, um, Jeremiah is staggering like a drunk man because he can't even believe what he's hearing out of these prophets. Therefore, what will their way be like? Slippery paths in the darkness. Slippery paths in the darkness. Uh, Rob, can you read Psalm 119, verse 105? And you're far away, and we're not, and we're in a big echo room here, so read loud, please. Yes. 119. <clears throat> Psalm 119, verse 105. Your word is Your word is a lamp to my feet and a light unto my path. What two things is God's word like? Light and salt. Light and salt. Light, yeah, so. <clears throat> and a light unto my path. It illuminates. When we compare this to Jeremiah 23, 12, what were the prophets and priests not doing? Not following his word. Not following his word. Your word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. I can see where I'm going in the dark so I'm not on a slippery slope. Who is driving them in, in 2312? Who is driving them into dark, slippery paths? The Lord is. Oh. What will God bring upon them? Disaster. Disaster. How important is it to not only know our Bibles, but also obey our Bibles? A matter of life and death. Okay. Uh, Tracy, Jeremiah 23, 13, please. <clears throat> Moreover, among the prophets of Samaria, I saw an authentic king. He prophesied by Baal and led my people... Israel Thank you. If you have your pens, I want you to circle this verse. Or underline it or highlight it. What prophets is God talking about? From what area? Samaria. Samaria. Okay. What, a what adjective does God give about what he saw? 
Unsavory. Unsavory. I want you to circle that word unsavory or highlight it. Disgusting. Okay. <laughs> what two things did God accuse the prophets of Samaria of doing? False prophecy? Okay. What kind of false prophecy? Who were they prophesying by? Baal. They're actively saying, this is what not the God of Israel says. And leading God's people astray. This is what the demon God, Baal, says. Disgusting, unsavory thing. Susan, can you read 2314? In the month of the prophets of Jerusalem, I have seen something horrible. They commit adultery and live a lie, and strengthen the hands of evildoers, so that no one of them turns from their wickedness. They are like Sodom to me. The people of Jerusalem are all like them now. Thank you. Which prophets is God <laughs> talking about now? The, one with Jer the prophets of Jerusalem. The prophets of Jerusalem. What adjective does God use for what he saw with the prophets of Jerusalem? Horrible. Circle that word horrible. Which do you think is worse? Something unsavory or something horrible? Horrible. What three things does God accuse the prophets of Jerusalem of doing? <clears throat> Commit adultery. Commit adultery. Walk in lies. Walk in lies. Strengthen the hands of evil doers. And strengthen the hands of evil doers. Hmm. Hmm. What was the result? No one turns away from the wickedness. What do they become like? Sodom and Gomorrah. Sodom and Gomorrah in God's eyes. The city of destruction. <coughs> Sulfur and brimstone. In a 2020 study, that was, study that was published in 2020, I found this online, it was found that 68% of church-going men and 50% of pastors in North America view pornography on a regular basis. Seventy-six percent of Christian adults age 18 to 24, actively search for porn. Jesus says, if you look on at a woman with lust, you have already committed adultery. Already committed adultery. Oh. Is prophesying by Baal a bad thing? thing in God's eyes? <laughs> Don't ask dumb questions, Jason. <laughs> Is God okay with people prophesying by Baal? No. Out of the two types of prophets, which is worse? Samaria or Jerusalem? Jerusalem. Okay, so we're not saying that prophesying by Baal is an okay thing. We're not. It's very bad. 
but what the prophets of Jerusalem were doing, the sexual immorality, the lying, the supporting evil people is worse. I would think. I would think in uh, Samaria, um, right away they went to the high places, the astral poles, Baal. Um, so people, you know, knew. Mm -hmm. uh, whereas in Jerusalem, there was less. That wasn't. That wasn't condoned. So the priests were supposedly still representing God. Hey, John. As we look at the stats that I shared tonight, <clears throat> what do you think the North American church looks more like? Samaria or Jerusalem? Jerusalem. According to verse 13, what have they all become like? Yeah. According to verse 13? Yeah. The bottom of 13. They led Israel so astray. Yeah, but what did they become like? What cities? Yeah. Oh, so that's 14. Oh, that's 14. Yeah, sorry. 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 Yeah. I'm sorry. Verse 15. Please, Ivan. Therefore, thus says the Lord of hosts concerning the prophets Behold, I will feed them with wormwood and make them drink the water of gall. For from the prophets of Jerusalem, profaneness has gone out into all the land. Thank you. <clears throat> Again, what does therefore mean? Because of. Because of this. As a result of this. As a result of this. What is the title used for God here? The Lord of armies. The Lord of hosts or? Armies. I like that. The Lord of hosts means the Lord of angel armies. Okay. If God calls himself the God of heaven's military as he is rebuking you, is this a good thing or bad thing for you? It's a bad thing. You're in trouble. <clears throat> You're in trouble. Oh, you and I had the same dad, huh? No. <laughs> no, it was my mom. We had a stick hanging in the pantry. <laughs> okay. Just take a step back farther and dad's making you go cut the switch. <laughs> yep. And you always come back with the soft one because you don't think it's going to hurt as bad. <sighs> Who is God speaking to here in verse 15? Prophets, what two things is he going to do to the prophets? Make them eat wormwood and drink water of gall. Okay. Make them eat wormwood, that's bitterness. Okay, if you look at Revelation, a star comes down, calls, calls it bitter water wormwood. Bitter water, poisoned water, poisoned food, gall. Gall is, well, we'll talk about it in a bit. Uh, Jane, we are going to depart from this and go to Psalm chapter 69 in verses 20 to 21. Psalm 69, verses 20 to 21. Scorn has broken my heart and has left me helpless. I looked for sympathy, but there was none. For comforts, but I found none. They put gall in my food and gave me vinegar to thirst. Thank you. Who do you think the psalmist is talking about? Jesus. Jesus. On the cross. Was Jesus also a prophet? Yeah. Yeah. 
is Jesus also taking the curse of the prophets of Jerusalem? Yes. Mm -hmm. Yes. Okay. Trish, mm -hmm. we're going to go back to Jeremiah 22, 16, please. All right. Thus says the Lord of hosts, do not listen to the words of the prophets who prophesy to you, filling you with vain hopes. They speak visions of their own minds, not from the mouth of the Lord. Okay. Who does God tell his people not to listen to? The prophets. The prophets what? What kind of prophets? What, what do these prophets do? Prophesy to you. In? How do they prophesy to you? You're, you're deluding you. Mine says, in vain hopes. Mine says false hopes. False hopes, vain hopes, okay. Visions of their own heart. Yeah. Okay, so what does vain hope mean? Randy, um, who has an NIV here? You do? Okay. Randy, I want you to read Ecclesiastes 1.1. And then after Randy's done reading that, Susan, I want you to read Ecclesiastes 1.1. 1, 1. Ready? Yeah. The words of the preacher, the son of David, king in Jerusalem. Keep on going. We'll no. go, go to one, two then. Vanity of vanities, says the preacher. Vanity of vanities is all vanity. Vanity, vanity. Okay. Do, does yours say vanity? No, I didn't get that. Okay, that's fine. Okay. It, okay, so guys, Ecclesiastes, Ecclesiastes is a hard book to find. Don't worry about it. I'll quote to you what Ecclesiastes 1-2 says. Meaningless, meaningless. It is all meaningless. Okay. Since we've read this from two different translations, what does vain or vanity mean? Meaningless. Okay. So back to 2216. So what is vain hope? Meaningless hope. Hope with no meaning to it. Emptiness. The CSB has absolute futility. Absolute futility. It's meaningless. It's empty. It's dumb. So what do these prophets, prophets speak of in 2216? Visions from their own minds. Visions from their own minds. I've got a fresh word from God. I had a dream last night. i got to share this with you. i got to get it out. What do they not speak? It's not from the Lord's mouth. It's not from the Lord's mouth. Mouth. What truly brings hope? Is it this vain hope that the false prophets preach? So what truly brings hope? The words from the Lord's mouth recorded for us in the 66 book canon known as today's Bible. Whose turn is it? Is it Randy? No, you read Randy. Uh, Darcy. 2317, please. <clears throat> they keep on saying to those who despise me, the Lord has spoken, you will have peace. They have said to everyone who follows the stubbornness of his heart, no harm will come to you. 
Okay. So who are the prophets speaking to? The, the people of Judah. What does it say here? People who despise the word of the Lord. Oh. People who despise the word of God. You know how easy it is to pick out those quote-unquote Christians that despise the word of God? Don't judge lest you be judged. <laughs> That's it right there. They don't know the word. They despise it. You just yeah, read it. One of those things where you said, read it in context. That's right. Because that's not the whole verse. Exactly. So, who are the prophets speaking to? Those who despise the word of the Lord. What does this tell us about people today who follow false prophets? It's not that they don't know it, they despise, they despise it. They hate it. They would much rather follow Kenneth Copeland, who says, send me money and God will give you more. What do these false prophets teach according to verse 17? They're basically preaching safety. Follow your own heart. Follow your heart. And you'll be okay. If you think that you're a zim zazer, mm. that's okay. Mm. Let's fly a rainbow flag outside. That's okay. Let's fly a pink, blue, gray flag outside. That's okay. That's scary. What's a pink, blue, gray flag? Pedophilia. Oh. Okay. What is it? Pedophilia. Oh. So if you see the pink, blue, gray stripes, you know who they're supporting and what they support. Who are, the spot, who are the prophets speaking to when they say, no disaster will come upon you? The ones who are following their own hearts. The ones who are following their own hearts and who despise the word of the Lord. Jeremiah 23, 18. Whose turn is it? Is it Helen? Oh. Okay. For who has been the counsel of the Lord to see him to know good? Who has paid attention to his word to the gate? Thank you. Okay. This is the crux of the chapter or the Bible study. You need to get this. Or this is the beginning of the crux. From here down to 22 is the crux. What five things did the prophets of Jerusalem not do? Stood in, stay, uh, stand in the council of the Lord. They did not do that. See and hear. Paid attention to his word or listened. Those five things. Where does a prophet get his word from? A true prophet. From God. Okay, that's where. Now, we're going to break this verse down. And we're going to look at the how. How does a prophet get the word of God? Number one. <clears throat> stands in the counsel of the Lord. Now, I want you to pay attention to the spelling of counsel. How is it spelt? C-I-L. It's not S-E-L. It's C-I-L at the end. Mine's spelled S-E-L. Oh, 
The L count sil. It's more important with the I L. Mm -hmm. And this is why. Council I L is a legislative body. A prophet stands in the midst of the triune God. Number two, he sees the word, meaning he reads it. He studies it. Number three, he hears the word. He listens to it. He understands it. Number four, he pays attention to the word means he walks in it. His life is dictated by it. And five, he listens. He obeys the word. When we see the prophets in the Bible, they, the true prophets in the Bible, their prophecies stem from the law, the first five books of the Bible. They all stem from there. They don't deviate. They'll grow out of it, but they don't deviate. They don't go off tangent. Whose turn is it? Rob? No, you read it. No. First, uh, sorry, Second Peter, one twenty one, please. Second Peter, one twenty one. Okay, so what does not produce prophecy? The will of man does not produce prophecy. How did men prophesy according to 2 Peter 1.21? They were moved by the Holy Spirit. They were moved? Anyone else? Carried along. Carried along. How were they moved or carried along by the Holy Spirit? How do you guys think? I'll break it down for you very easy. Number one, they stood in the council of the triune God. Number two, they read the word. Number three, they understood the word. Number four, they walked according to the word. Number five, they obeyed the word. Okay, Tracy, Jeremiah 23, 19, please. Behold, the storm of the Lord has gone forth in wrath. Even a whirling tempest, it will swirl down on the head of the wicked. Okay. What does behold mean? Look. Just not look, but stop, gaze, look intently at this. What were what were they to watch? The wrath. The whirlwind of the Lord. The wrath. What has gone forth? The whirlwind of the Lord. What would we call a whirling tempest or the whirlwind? Today, if we had a whirlwind, tornado. a tornado, how destructive are tornadoes? Extremely. None. 
It's by the grace of God if it jumps from house to house and misses one. Where will the tornado of the Lord hit? On the heads of the wicked. This is not good. Okay. <clears throat> Susan, 2320, please. The anger of the Lord will not turn back until he fully accomplishes the purposes of his heart. In days to come, he will understand it clearly. Okay. What will the anger of the Lord not do? It's not going to turn back. It's not going to stop. Guys, That's not a good thing. What must God do, according to verse 20? Make his will that he set out to do in his heart. So he's going to set out and do it because he's not holding back his wrath and he's not turning. When would they understand this? In the last days, in the latter days, in days to come? When are the latter days? You guys know. From the time of Christ's resurrection, Onward. They will understand this at the time of Christ's resurrection. Onward. Jesus Christ, Israel's true prophet the true high priest and the king of kings took the tornado of God's wrath on himself on the cross, just not for Israel, but for the whole world. Whoa. Jeremiah 23, 21, please, Ivan. I have not sent these prophets, yet they ran. I have not spoken to them, yet they prophesied. Thank you. What did God not do? Send the prophets. Send the prophets. What did the prophets do? They ran. They ran. What else did God not do? Did not speak to them. What did the false prophets do? They spoke for him. They spoke for him. Ladies and gentlemen, it is an extremely dangerous thing to say. God told me. if it's not in the Bible, in context. <clears throat> it is an extremely dangerous thing. When you speak for God, when he did not speak, because Guess what you're calling God? A liar. I know that our group likes to watch a lot of Jack Gibbs and J.D. Grog and things like that, and I like those guys. And I think they're pretty sound. Mm -hmm. Don't agree with 100%, but if you agree with 100% of any preacher, there's probably something wrong. <laughs> okay? You're in a cult. They'll warn you as much as I warn you. 
stay away from those date setters. They're going to give you false hope. Now you're speaking for God, and God didn't speak. Jeremiah 23, 22. Whose turn is it? Jane? Yes. But if they had stood in my council, they would have proclaimed my words to my people and would have turned them from their evil ways and from their evil deeds. Thank you. What should the false prophets have done? Allow the people to hear his words. Let's go. What, what's the first thing? In the council. In the council. C-I-L. What is council C-I-L? A legislative assembly. They would have stood in the presence of God the Father, the judge who needs to execute justice. They would have also stood in the presence of God the Son, the Lamb of God who takes away all sin, the propitiation, the one who paid the penalty for our sin, who fulfilled the justice of God the Father on himself on behalf of us on the cross. They would have stood in the presence of God the Holy Spirit, our deposit, our engagement ring, our guarantee of salvation, the one who sanctifies us. But they didn't. Whose words would they speak if they had stood in his counsel? God's words. God's words. Who would they speak God's words to? People, the people. God's people. What would the result be? They would have turned from their evil ways and come back to God. What is the role of the prophet? As we read all of this now, and we get it in context, is the role of the prophet to be a Christian fortune teller? According to this, what is the role of the prophet? Speak God's word. To speak God's word in order to bring God's people back into right relationship with God. To bring God's people back into right relationship with God. Ray, can you read Jeremiah 23, 23, please? <clears throat> Am I a God near at hand? says the Lord, and not a God afar off. Thank you. So God asks a question. Can we turn that, can someone turn that question into a statement? <coughs> God is near and not far off. Yeah. Um, I think that you only read half of that. No, you didn't. Um, Trish, verse 24, please. Can a man hide himself in secret places so that I cannot see him, declares the Lord? Do I not fill heaven and earth, declares the Lord? Can, can, we, can someone turn that into a statement? You can't hide from me. You can't hide from me. And why can't you hide from me, God says? Because I'm everywhere, heaven and earth. I fill heaven and earth. I, I want you to stop and just think about this. In the Bible, we have three heavens. Okay? We have the atmosphere 
as one heaven. We have what we call outer space as the second heaven. And we have the throne room of God, the third heaven. I don't know which heaven he's talking about. I can understand the concept of atmosphere. I can understand the concept of outer space. I don't know how big third heaven is. Because I can't see it with my physical eyes. But let's talk about the bigness of God. And let's say he fills heaven one and heaven two. CSB says, do I not fill the heavens? The heavens. That is outer space. God fills all of outer space. He's so big. And at the same time, he fills this chair right next to you. He is a God that's not only everywhere. He's a God that's right beside you. Whenever you're ready to turn to him, he's ready to turn to you. Randy, can you read verse 25, please? <clears throat> um, where am I? Yeah. No, uh, hold on. 25 to 20. Um, 23-25? Yeah. 23-25 to 27. I have heard what the prophets have said who prophesy lies in my name, saying, I have dreamed, I have dreamed. How long will this be in the heart of the prophets who prophesy lies? Indeed, they are prophets of deceit of their own heart, who try to make my people forget my name by their dreams, which everyone tells his neighbor as their fathers forgot my name for Baal. Thank you. What has God heard? Verse 25. Yeah. But the prophets who prophesy are lying. They're lying. They're lying in God's name. name. Okay. What does God say the dreams are? What kind of dreams? I had a dream. I had a dream. Yeah. What does it say before that? Delusions. They're delusions. They're lies. As we have seen the character of God through the true prophets, do you think God is heartbroken by what the false prophets are preaching? I do. This is why. As long as he's angry and his wrath is going to go out, he's heartbroken because they're driving his people away from him. God was forgotten and replaced by a false god of Baal because of the false prophets. Ladies and gentlemen, how many of us have friends or family that grew up in church and don't want anything they don't want anything to do with God. Three brothers, Three brothers children, nieces and, nieces and nephews. They come to church do they hear the love of Christ. Year one, year two. Do they hear the love of Christ or they, do they just hear? Because the new way to preach is 
25 minutes of story <laughs> and two and a half minutes of scripture and a conclusion. Or don't preach more than 15 to 20 minutes because you'll bore the people. I don't find God's word boring. I find it exhilarating. I find it captivating. But when 50% of the pastors out there are watching porn on a regular basis, are they acting like Jerusalem prophets or true prophets? Whose turn is it to read? Is it Darcy? I've been last. Okay, 2328, please. The prophet who has only a dream should recount the dream, but the one who has my word should speak my word truthfully. For what is thought until it is written? Thank you. God makes a distinction between two things. What are they? The dream and his word. Okay. And? Strong grain. Strong grain. How are the prophets who speak God's word to speak it? Faithfully. Faithfully and truthfully. What does it mean to speak the word of God faithfully? Helen? I'm going to have you read 2 Timothy chapter 2, verses 14 to 21. 2 Timothy chapter 2, verses 14 to 21. <clears throat> Remind them of these things and charge them before God, not to quarrel about words, which does no good, but only ruins the hearers. Do your best to present yourself to God as one approved, a worker who, who has no need to be ashamed, rightly handling the word of truth. But avoid irreverent babble, for it will lead people into more and more ungodliness, and their talk will spread like the evil wind. Among them are Hymenius and Philetus. Thank you. Hymenius and Philetus. Who have swerved from the truth, saying that the resurrection has already happened. <coughs> they are upsetting the faith of some. But God's firm foundation stands, bearing him this seal. The Lord knows the Lord knows whose are his. And let everyone whose names, who names the name of the Lord depart from iniquity. Now in a great house, there are not only vessels of gold and silver, but also of wood and clay. Some for honorable use, some for dishonorable. Therefore, if anyone cleanses, cleanses himself pardon me, from what is dishonorable, he will be a vessel for honorable use. Set apart as holy, useful to the master of the house, ready for every good work. Thank you. What are we not to <coughs> quarrel about? Verse 14. About words. About words. About, what are we not to quarrel about? Yeah, words. Who does this ruin? Oh. Ruins the hearers, not the speakers. What are we to do our best in? Present ourselves to God, to God as one approved. 
to present our God, ourselves to God as one approved. Not ashamed. Not ashamed. And rightly handling the word. And rightly handling the word of truth. So how are we to use the Bible? You just said it, Trish. Rightly handling. Rightly handling it. There's a difference. There's three differences here. You have proof texting, where you have a point that you're trying to make, and you'll take scriptures out of context to prove that point. <laughs> what scriptures is it? Is it Philippians 4.13? I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. Is that Philippians? Okay. So, with that being said, a proof text would say, Jason, who is six foot five, 225 pounds, can be a, a Kentucky Derby jockey and win the Kentucky Derby because I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. Yes or no? <laughs> when you read it in context, it has everything to do with ministry. When you have money to do ministry, and when you are, when you can't even afford smoke off a cheeseburger, you can do all things through Christ who strengthens me for the work of the ministry. How about this one? We're going to see this. Jeremiah 29, 11. I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord. Plans to prosper you and not to harm you. Plans to give you a hope and a future. Thanks, God. And then you read it in context. And so far in Jeremiah, Does this sound like God's plans like right now? No. His plans before giving them a hope and a future is a divine whooping. This is not for us. This is for Israel. Don't take it out of context. And yet you drive to Bow Island. And it's on the side of that building. For I know I have the plans for you, declares the Lord. Plans to prosper you and not to harm you. Plans to give you a hope and a future. Thanks again for taking it out of context. Pruning harms. It hurts. But God prunes you so that you will bear more fruit. Okay. We, we got need to think of all those deceitful ones. If it's not focused on Jesus, it's not real. Susan, you <laughs> hit the nail on the head. If it's not pointing to Jesus, the Jesus of the Bible. Exactly. So it's not that hard to discern. Very easy. <laughs> very easy, Susan. Okay, so back to the Second Timothy one. When is the resurrection supposed to happen? Because these two guys were saying the resurrection already happened. When is it supposed to happen? It happens at the rapture. The dead in Christ will rise first, then the rest of us who remain will be there, will, will join them. First Thessalonians 4. Four is it 14? In verse 19, what stands? God's foundation. Say that again? God's foundation. God's foundation. 
Who does God know? Those who are his. What does everyone who says they know the Lord do? Abstain from wickedness. Watch these people. Like let's let, let's go back to Mark Driscoll just for a second. Does he have some good stuff on the internet? Yeah, he does. At the same time, you got to look at why he was released from Mars Hill. He was an abusive pastor. He was like a shock rock radio ho DJ host. He was yelling and screaming at everybody. And the kicker was his new book. I think it was Doctrine that he was trying to push. He was inflating the pre-sales in order to get it higher on the New York Times bestseller. Deceit. And now we see the same thing played out two weeks ago at a men's conference as a publicity stunt for his book. Be careful. <clears throat> what kind of vessels are in the great house? And there's two, really two types. Not only silver and gold. Yeah. Wooden and silver, clay. Wooden clay. Okay. And what two <clears throat> uses are they for? Some for honor and some for dishonor. Okay. Ladies and gentlemen, I, I'm going to sound crude here. Some are for honorable use, like the banquets. Some are for dishonorable use, something that plumbers install. Okay? If you look at the parables of the kingdom of God in Matthew 13, there's always people of the evil one intermingled with God's people in God's kingdom. They, at first, they look like God's people, and then after a while you realize, eh, be careful, pay attention. What types of vessel does God use for his work? An honorable or a dishonorable vessel? Honorable. honorable. Whose turn is it to read? Rob, can you read John 6, 29, please? Are you in 629? No. Jesus answered them, This is the work of God that you believe in him who he has sent. What, okay, so what is the work of God? To believe, to believe in him. In he Jesus. Okay, so if God is going to use you as an honorable vessel for his work, what is his work, according to the Bible. Is it to preach prosperity gospel? What, what is his work, according to John 6, 29? To believe in the one who he sent. Jesus. Whoa. Isn't that something? 
Tracy, can you read Romans 10, 9 to 15, please? That if you confess with your mouth, Jesus is Lord, and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. For with the heart a person believes, resulting in righteousness, and with the mouth he confesses, resulting in salvation. For the scripture says, whoever believes in him will not be disappointed. For there is no distinction between Jew and Greek. For the same Lord is Lord of all, abounding in riches for all who call on him. For whoever will call on the name of the Lord will be saved. How then will they call on him in whom they have not believed? How will they believe in him whom they have not heard? And how will they hear without a preacher? How will they preach unless they are sent? Just as it is, just as it is written, how beautiful are the feet of those who bring good news of good things. Thank you. So, according to what we read, how is someone saved? By confessing with your mouth and believing in your heart. By confessing with your mouth that Jesus is Lord. Okay, I share the gospel a lot. What does it mean to confess Jesus as Lord. You guys know? Has anyone ever over here ever rented a house or an apartment? Yes? Who do you pay the rent to? The owner. The land. Who is? The owner. The owner. So, when we're confessing Jesus as Lord, come on in, Rita. When, when we're confessing Jesus as Lord, what are we actually saying? He owns us. Okay. This is very offensive in Western culture. Do you know what this is? This is a master-slave relationship. That's what it is. Paul says we're bond slaves. Bond That's servants. right. Mm-hmm. This is not a democracy. I don't get a vote with Jesus. He tells me what to do, and as a slave, I have no rights but to do what he tells me. So if I confess with my mouth that Jesus is Lord and then do what? Believe in that God what? Then what will happen? You will be saved. For it is with you your heart that you you are you believe and are justified, and it's with your mouth that you Confess unto salvation. Okay. How does someone call on the name of the Lord according to what we read? How will they call on him in whom they have not believed? And how are they to believe in him who they've never heard? And how are they to hear without someone preaching? preaching? And how are they to preach unless they are sent? As it is written, how beautiful are the feet of those who preach the good news. Just a little side note, if you guys are a little confused upon that, like, do they have nail polish on? Like, what is it? No. You would have a guy on the wall of the city looking out. And when there was a battle, they, the party who won and the party who lost would both send a runner to tell the city 
what happened? Did they win or lose? If the runner was running fast and kicking up dust with his feet, they knew already. They won. But if the runner was slow and sluggish before he got to them, to the wall, they already knew they lost. And the beautiful feet who bring good news are the fast runners who kick up the dust. So a sent one. How are they to... It talks about they need to be sent. A sent one. Do you know what the Greek word for sent one is? Apostolos. It's where we get a word apostle from. And guess what the Latin word is? Missio. Where we get a word missionary. In order to be sent... God's people need to come back to his council, C-I-L. A prophet does this. These people need to be used for God's work, which is having people believe in Jesus. That's an evangelist. So we looked at apostle, we've seen prophet, we've seen evangelist. These new believers need to be shepherd, uh, shepherded rightly. This is being pastored. You need a pastor. They need to be discipled into the ways of Christ, taught by godly teachers. Whose turn is it? Susan, is it yours? Ephesians 4, 11, and 12. Ephesians 4. Yeah, Ephesians 4, 11, and 12. So, Christ himself gave the apostles, the prophets, the evangelists, the pastors, and teachers to equip his people for works of service, so that the body of Christ may be built up. Okay. Before I go any further, was Christ sent by God? Was Christ a prophet? Mm -hmm. Was Christ an evangelist? Mm -hmm. Was Christ a shepherd? Yes. Mm -hmm. Was Christ a teacher? Mm -hmm. What is the church called according to Ephesians 4, 11, 12? The body of Christ. Does every person in the body of Christ have all five of these gifts? No. Since the church is the body of Christ, there will be certain people that have these gifts. And let's look at this. What five types of people did God give to the church? Apo yeah, apostles first. Apostles, which are missionaries. Prophets. What else? Evangelists. Pastors and, and teachers. Okay. Why did he give the, po the apostles, prophets, evangelists, shepherds, and teachers? To equip his people for works of service. For works of service. What's the work of God? Son, to believe the one he sent. To believe the one he sent. Oh. What kind of vessels does God use? Honorable or dishonorable? Honorable. Does a mature Christian look like a dishonorable vessel or an honorable vessel? 
Have you asked the Father how he wants to use you for his work and how you need to adjust your life for his work? This brings us to our conclusion. Number one. There are many false prophets today. Number two. God saw the prophets in Jerusalem who preached what unregenerated people wanted to hear and they were worse than the prophets of Baal. Number three, stay away from people who preach on dreams and say, I have a fresh word from the Lord or God told me to tell you. Stay away from those people. Number four, these Types of prophets have the wrath of God coming for them like a devastating tornado. Number five. God calls these prophets dishonorable utensils in the house of God. Number six. The charismatics and the ultra- Conservatives have a misunderstanding of New Testament prophets. They think they are some sort of Christian fortune teller, and they're not. Number seven. <clears throat> Jesus took the wrath of God for the false prophets and everyone else who chose who cho choose to repent and be used by God for honorable use in God's house. Number eight. A true New Testament prophet is not a Christian fortune teller, but rather a person in the church who stands in the presence of the triune God, who is competent in the scriptures, and walks in obedience to God to bring Christ's people back to right relationship with Christ. Number nine. A New Testament prophet does not add to Scripture because the canon is closed, but uses Scripture to correct God's people. Number 10. A true New Testament prophet should be used to help build up the body of Christ when accompanied with the missionary, the evangelist, the shepherd, and the teacher. Randy, can you pray for us, sir?